The problem with talking about fatty liver is you have two very distinct camps. You have the over-marketed, super hyped up, kind of just cheesy talking like, you're gonna get a fatty liver and this is what you need to do with no real data to back it up. And then you have the other side, which is a very clinical side, which is boring to talk about and doesn't get the attention. My goal is to bridge that gap, okay? Go in between and explain the clinical side, explain the data that we have, and also explain things that are realistic that you could be aware of, okay? Now, when you look at fatty liver, it progresses in pretty straightforward stages, okay, four stages. Stage one is where you develop simple fatty liver, okay, you're starting to develop fat deposits in the liver, the hepatocytes become a little bit ballooned, the liver cells are swollen up, okay, and the liver starts to kind of degrade and function a tiny bit. Then you have state of hepatitis. This is the next stage where now you don't just have fatty liver, but it's becoming inflamed as well start to potentially lose some function. It's still possibly reversible at this point. Then stage three, move into fibrosis. Now fibrosis, the liver is still functioning, but you're starting to potentially lose some function and you have scarring that is essentially irreparable. And then finally you move into cirrhosis, which obviously is where the scarring has rendered that area of the liver totally useless. And that's when people start to see symptoms. So with this, we need to understand early signs as much as we can before it progresses to this stage four or even stage three. So you're still in a reversible state because it's really seeming to be a very strong metabolic link here. So the first one I want to talk about, and just full disclaimer, some of these are vague, but the idea is stacking them up with each other and creating this, okay, I have this, 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 and this. It's time to check it out, right? First one is GI upset. And I know it sounds simple, but the World Journal of Gastroenterology published a paper that took a look at people that had full-blown like into cirrhosis, right? So the stage four with fatty liver or cirrhosis in general. They found that 80% of people with this had at least one GI symptom. 49.5% had bloating, 24% had pain, 18% had burping issues, and 8% had diarrhea, with the severity of these increasing based upon the severity of their fibrosis or cirrhosis. So does it mean you wake up bloated one day, you automatically have a fatty liver? No, what it means is that, okay, if you're consistently bloated, okay, and you have some of these other things that we're gonna talk about, Again, it's worth looking into because we're seeing more and more of this. This next one is very important, probably the most important one to recognize, but it also shares symptomology with other things, and that is serious fatigue. What we forget about with the liver is that the liver is so important when it comes down to energy. Fatigue and liver function go hand in hand. Remember, our liver is responsible for the regulation, the storage, the release, and ultimately even the production of substrates that give us energy. Without the liver, the whole system crumbles because we create the substrates that we need for energy in the liver or we deal with them. The liver even goes so far as measures our glucose to send signals to the pancreas to tell the pancreas how much insulin to produce. So think about it, if the liver is dysfunctional, the first broad symptom you'd feel is a lack of energy because it's not able to do its job. So a lot of our issues originate in the gut, go through the portal vein, the portal system, go to the liver, and then it rears its ugly head there. And then as things progress, you get more inflammation, which brings on a second set of fatigue. So if this progression of fatigue aligns with the progression of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Now there's two different routes in which we get fatigued. We sort of have central fatigue and more peripheral fatigue. Central fatigue is happening where the brain is like, it's harder to get motivated. You're tired at sort of brain level. Peripheral fatigue is where you're literally starved of fuel. So the cells are literally fatigued. Now, I wish I could say they're very clear defined feelings, but they're not. I think they get like crossed and blurred a lot, very blurred lines. The bottom line is like there's fatigue where you're just mentally tired and sort of at the central level exhausted. And then there's fatigue where your cells are starved of fuel. And what we're potentially seeing with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, it's a little combination of both. Now there's a study that was published in the journal Gut that took a look at subjects, 156 subjects rather, with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. They found that there was significant increases in fatigue as well as significant decreases in physical activity level directly correlated with the severity of the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Does not mean 100% correlation is causation, but again, you've got a little bloating, you're getting super fatigued, you know your diet maybe hasn't been so great. Well, let's talk about this next one, okay? And this next one is a lot more of a telltale, but it's harder to identify. And that's gonna be swollen lymph nodes. 
Okay, now we're talking specifically swollen lymph nodes surrounding the organ, right? Because the closer the lymph nodes are to an organ that is dysfunctional or inflamed, the more likely that those are gonna be the ones that are inflamed. Now, the job of the lymph nodes, they essentially are draining interstitial fluid, they're draining immune cells and even waste and ultimately funneling it and helping it go to the liver so it can get it processed and excreted. So the liver is very critical with this entire lymphatic vesicle system. And we notice it. If the liver's not working well, then potentially get, things get backed up and the lymph nodes get swollen. Now, there's a study published in PLOS1 that took a look at what is called portal lymphadenopathy. Now, this is where the lymph nodes surrounding the portal region are swollen. They took a look at 75 individuals and they found there is a very clear and direct association with this portal lymphadenopathy and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So the more progressed the liver issues were, the more pronounced the swollen lymph nodes were. Now, from a mechanistic side, they deemed this because of the ballooning hepatocytes. Basically, the liver cells swell up, causes damage, liver's not able to do its job as well, lymph nodes get swollen, almost as though there's an infection. So if you're super lean, you can feel these. It's difficult if you're overweight because obviously you, you, you can't feel all your lymph nodes. But if it's something that you do notice, along with being bloated and being fatigued, well, do the math. Like, you need to look at these things. Now, the next one that I want to talk about, I want to get into biomarkers. Like, simple stuff that you can look at as far as blood work that does paint a picture alongside like sort of correlative risk factors that we already know. One of the things I metabolically want to say though before I get into that is that overfeeding in general, whether it's overeating saturated fat, overeating carbohydrates, overeating fructose, it's always the overeating that seems to be the issue with this. Okay, so what you want to do is I highly recommend you increase your protein intake. Okay, just the simple demand thermogenically speaking of protein is going to make it harder to overeat protein and it's harder for protein to ultimately store as liver fat based upon the research that I have seen. Okay. I put a link down below for Thrive Market. If you want to get like some protein snacks, they've got things like chomps, they've got beef jerky, they've got really good things to snack on. But the best part is there's a 30% off discount link. They are a sponsor on this channel. They have been for five or six years. It's how we create the content that we create and keep going and pay our team and rock and roll. But the best part is you get a discount. That's a 30% off discount link. So you can shop at Thrive Market, do your full grocery shopping there. They even have meat and seafood options that are much more sustainable, which is great. Already generally cheaper than the grocery store and it gets delivered to your doorstep. So 30% off using that link down below for Thrive Market. I'm not saying Thrive Market's gonna fix fatty liver. I am saying they are gonna give you the tools to revamp your lifestyle. And as this video goes on, I think you'll understand more of what I'm saying. So after this video, check out that link down below in the description get some groceries delivered, and get a $50 free gift as well when you use that link. So you go to the doctor and they do some basic blood work even once or twice a year. And you think that that should be enough because you look at your what are called AST and ALT, these liver enzymes, right? And they're high, but they're within range, so they're not a red flag. Okay, well, no big deal. You shouldn't worry about it. Well, there was an interesting study that took a look at 204 type 2 diabetic people. They found that of these 204 type 2 diabetic people, 87% of them had fatty liver. And of that, 62% had progressed to the state of hepatitis, and over 30% had progressed to the fibrosis. Why am I saying this? What was interesting is that their AST and their ALT were elevated, but still within normal range. So we definitely noticed that there is a relationship, like as the liver starts to degrade in function, ALT and AST probably do elevate, but it's not direct enough to see them elevate sky high, generally until it's too late, where things have already progressed so much. But there's a very important message that goes along with this. 87% of the people were type 2 diabetic. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that if you have these other symptoms that I'm talking about, your AST and your ALT are mildly elevated, but you also know that you're probably insulin resistant, or you know that your fasting glucose is pretty bad, or you know that you, when you measure glucose after eating, it goes really high, there's a good likelihood that that is the case with fatty liver, right? Like, because we see a lot of percentage of type 2 diabetics with fatty liver because it is a metabolic situation involved with overfeeding of carbohydrates, overfeeding of hyperpalatable foods, overfeeding of saturated fats, at least coordinately. So with this, we have to look at risks that we know exist, okay? Obesity, a big one. If you're overweight, the likelihood of you having fatty liver is already higher. I'm, I'm giving you a checkbox here, right? Check, check, I have this, I have this. Oh shoot, I'm also overweight? Well, the studies now demonstrate that if you're obese, you have three and a half times 
the chances of getting fatty liver. So if you're insulin resistant and you're obese, I mean, it's a pretty high likelihood you already have a fatty liver. It's actually not as common for skinny people to get fatty liver. It is something that definitely goes along with people that are overweight. But there's another one that is a missing piece, and it's something that you can also include in your blood work. Hypothyroidism. People don't really think about this, but there was a study published in Hepatology that took a look at almost 4,700 people, okay, and it found that hypothyroid definitely was associated with being or having a fatty liver. So in this case, so about 30% of people with hypothyroid also had a fatty liver. Hypothyroid a lot of times is more so the canary in the coal mine, meaning it is usually elevated or, or in this case decreased and TSH elevated as a result of other metabolic issues, which are to be determined based on the situation. So yes, it's sort of a symptom, not necessarily the problem, but it's another thing you can look at. Like, I'm overweight. My AST, my ALT are elevated. I have high blood sugar. I'm hypothyroid. And I have this pain in my abdomen and I'm fatigued. Well, there's no clear test that people can do for fatty liver. So with this, you need to make the adjustments. My personal biases with fatty liver, I'm gonna share my personal biases. I feel like fasting works very well because it puts people in this box where I need to lose weight, I need to burn fat, I need to do it now. I don't have time to fudge with this stuff. So I do recommend fasting. I do think that doing like three times a week of 18 hours is a great way to put yourself in a caloric restriction box that has pretty clear benefits with fatty liver simply by way of AMPK phosphorylation, caloric deficit, and putting you sort of in that window, right? So yes, could we get nuancy and split hairs with ways to lose weight? 100%. I'm gonna share my biases and what helped me lose 100 pounds. So I do think that doing that is a very powerful thing. Reducing carbohydrates, reducing saturated fat, I think those all matter. But obviously being active and reducing your glucose the best that you can, I have tons of content on that, is gonna be the best thing. So do you have a fatty liver? Unfortunately, the odds are a little bit stacked against you. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.